Hi everyone, um, I'm Monica from CIE and we have a super special guest today with us is Dr. Chris Edmonds, who is a Microsoft Teams champion for the Faculty of Science and Engineering. Hello Chris, welcome to our podcast. Hi Monica, thank you very much for that introduction. So Chris, tell us a little bit about you, where you're based and what you do. I'm a lecturer in the Department of Physics. Uh, my background is in particle accelerators uh, for treating cancer, um, but now I'm working on ways of educating the next generation of physicists. So. Um, ways of including new audiences and inspiring people to to take up physics. So is this how you have used Microsoft Teams in your program? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm responsible uh, for a project or a number of project-based initiatives within the mm-hmm. physics department. And we have used Microsoft Teams to help build a community um, of students who are working together to solve problems as part of their project-based learning. So you would say you're doing project-based learning. Tell me a little bit about the experience. I mean, how you roll it out. Were there any challenges? Just Uh, go with it. Lots of challenges. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. So um, the way in which Teams works at the moment is you have to get students to, well, either you can add students manually or you can uh, invite them to join this site itself or this Teams workspace Mm -hmm. themselves. So what we do with this is in one of the lectures, we present um, a code that students can use to then register on one of these Teams workspaces. Okay. Um, Did you experience any challenges, I mean, from the pedagogic point of view, using an online tool, which is Microsoft Teams? Um, So I'll go back a little bit. So before we started using Microsoft Teams, we Mm -hmm. were using Slack. I see. Um, And we found that students found this really intuitive. Uh, So pedagogically, we just instantly saw the value. We saw that students were working out how to use this thing for themselves. And we're kind of setting the trend, so to speak. So whereas previously students were completing uh, logbooks where they were stapling in lots of code, it was really artificial. It wasn't really representative of how people work in the workplace. We gave them this online tool and all of a sudden these students were collaborating in this wonderful way and having these conversations that couldn't have taken place otherwise. Did you have to give them any training or they just got it the first time? Oh, they get this stuff. They get this stuff straight away, absolutely. Well, in terms of the basic features anyway, so the fact that this is uh, this collaboration tool that can be installed on the mobile phone, it can work a bit like WhatsApp, which they're really super familiar with. I think it reflects the way in which uh, these students are communicating in their day-to-day lives. Okay. Um, Do you have any specific feedback from students saying, this has changed my life or it has improved. Well, maybe not changed my life, but <laughs> improved the student experience in general. Well, uh, what we find is that we haven't had that feedback. We haven't had the students turn around and say, this is know, great. This is great. Yeah. But what we have noticed is that the experience of students who use this is so much richer than those who didn't. So the year before we introduced this, um, the projects, ah, I don't want to say that the outputs of these were kind of flat, mm-hmm. but they were very much... Um, I don't even want to say ordinary, but yeah, okay, I'm going to say yeah, it. Same. they were quite ordinary. Um, yeah. But then once the students had this tool available to them, we just saw this kind of exponential growth in what the students were, were able to achieve within the time that was allotted to them. And the creativity of the solutions that they were producing, it just went through the roof. Okay, um, can you tell us a specific example, maybe a module, and just take us through the design of how it looks in Teams for you and what the students were expecting to do? Sure, yeah. Uh, so I look towards our final year project for our BSc students, which is Phys 379. Um, and what students have to do for this module is they have to work with a small supervisory team um, just to complete a piece of independent research. Uh, in previous years, we've used Slack for this, and the interactions between supervisors uh, and students were really enhanced by using this kind of online tool. Mm-hmm. Um, but there were drawbacks too. So because of the university's licensing with Slack or lack of, um, we were using a free version. There was only 10,000 stored messages that we could have. Um, and we were also having to ask our student office to go in and back up uh, or just take a snapshot of, of the workspace that the students had been used at the end of the semester, just so we had that evidence of what the students had done. Um, Coming into using Teams, what we were then able to do is create this one workspace in which we were able to put every single student and their supervisory team. Um, Within this workspace, we have one general channel, which we've got a lot of the kind of um, the important milestones for the projects. So things like the risk assessments, um, Mm -hmm. the project proposals, the stuff that all students have to complete. And then we've got these separate channels where the students can go in and, and discuss privately with their supervisory team about the 
the week to week kind of issues with the project. So you're using private channels? We're using private channels oh, as well I as see. the public channels too. And I should say we've got one more public channel, which is a careers channel as well, where I'm presenting a few different careers options for students. So just okay. trying to engage in the conversation with that as well. So are you part of the private channels as well? Do you kind of check what what they're up to? And uh, I'm not going to say that I'm or, checking it. Well, okay. I, you you know, <laughs> what's the word? I'm not like spying on them or anything like that. But <laughs> monitoring. Doing, monitoring, yeah. I'm just checking that the students are engaged with those you know, conversations with supervisors. Um, we said before about the, the, the students taking these, um, these kind of tools up really quite quickly. They're very familiar with this kind of way of working. I will say that one of the challenges that perhaps supervisors... They can be a bit slower to take up these new tools. They've had a lot of experience. They're very familiar with their own way of working. And yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's so how, how sure do you manage this? Because people don't like change yet, right? So you need to find a way. <laughs> <laughs> um, it comes through, uh, well, it's coming through as a lot of conversations at the minute. And as I said, there are some people who are super willing to take up these tools and they're very happy and very comfortable with it. And there's some of the people that need a, a little bit more support with it as well. So just making sure everyone's needs are met. Well, hopefully everyone needs to know. Do you feel that maybe the more students ask for this kind of tools, the change gets easier from the side of the lecturers, I mean? So so I, I think that lecturers recognise that this kind of tool is, is definitely necessary uh, for students in terms of the experience that they're developing, that they recognise that these kinds of tools are used in the workplace and that students have that really valuable experience of using these now. Um, I think they also, I think one of the things that lecturers would like is the kind of coherency in the way in which these tools are yeah. implemented as well. So before having something like Microsoft Teams available within the university, it was very much on an ad hoc basis. You know, people were choosing their own tools to use. And this would vary from module to module. And I think that kind of lack of consistency can be a challenge for people, especially right. when we're asking other people to be involved in modules and they have to learn a new tool set just to... Yeah, so that leads me to my next question, which is how do you manage the use of different tools in the student learning journey? By this, I mean the VLE and other platforms, maybe your department uses or student use like Facebook and WhatsApp. And how do you manage and integrate to deliver the best teaching and learning experience, group work, assessment. So we have different platforms in limited time. That's Absol the reality. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. So I, I think compared to the Blackboard environment that we have at the moment, um, Teams has filled this massive void that was there, you know. It really enabled us to to, to make, take group work to the next level, if you like. Um, we recognize that with Teams just relatively being new to the university, um, we're kind of pioneers with that. The integration with Canvas, which is coming up, isn't quite there yet, <laughs> but it's pending. And we can see how that's going to work as well. So I think the, the integration, still some work to be done. But at the moment, what we're doing is, is putting the content that we need to put on, on Vital. That's there. That's available. Students are aware of the team space. They know where to look for the information. Um, but it is a case of kind of fudging it at the moment but we can see the light at the end of the tunnel with that <laughs> thank you um if someone else were to implement teams for teaching and learning what are the three pieces of advice you would give them so three pieces of advice so to start off with i'd say start small um there's lots of different ways in which this stuff won't work quite as you expected um we tried it with uh, some interns first that we had over the summer just to make sure that we were comfortable with it and that it would meet our requirements um, there are a lot of things that teams, you know, and, and software tools like this will say that they do on paper and it'll sound absolutely amazing, but you really need to understand how that works before you can implement it effectively. So the second piece of advice is as you start to use this kind of software, you'll see some of the, or you'll become aware of some of the tools that you really want to use. You'll look on uh, the roadmap uh, that says when these tools are going to become available and I'll have a date on it. Don't always believe that date. So taking an example of our group module, uh, sorry, our final year projects module that I mentioned before, uh, having a private channel was like absolutely fundamental to this. We really needed that in order to be able to do what we wanted to do. Um, the initial date for release, I think it was like June 2019, uh, as we went through the summer, it kept on getting delayed, delayed, delayed. And it wasn't until right at the end of September that those private channels became available. So Stressful. it was close. <laughs> it was really, really close. And had that had they not have available them, we would have had to default back to our original um, original set of tools. So yeah, and also with that, it wasn't quite as we expected. So the private channels, um, 
we have 60 students in this particular module. Um, the private channel is currently limited to only 30. So we had to create a, a second workspace in which um, students were had to kind of overflow into. So I think it's just yeah. being prepared to. Okay. <laughs> and what's number three? Number three is be persistent. So when you start using these tools with students, uh, you'll be super aware of the benefits of this. It may take the students a little while to realize this too. So. Um, if you try this with students, uh, the very first session, you might not get that much engagement with it. Keep on going by the second, third or fourth session, then you'll really find that students are getting switched onto it. Okay, so basically is start small, be prepared and be persistent. Absolutely. Oh, okay, I think that's sound advice. <laughs> so finally, what is the way forward for you in the use of Microsoft Teams for teaching and learning? And as an institution, where do you see Microsoft Teams teams falling into in the big picture for us as an institution? I think uh, this kind of tool for us is absolutely perfect for our project-based learning. Um, so we've, we've got it set up now for our third year BSE module. Uh, we'll hopefully look to do the same for our fourth year module in future years. Um, we're also trying this in our second year module as well. So again, trying to provide this consistent experience for students as they go through the the kind of degree of using these kind of online tools where they can really kind of collaborate and talk to each other and work together to find these really interesting solutions to problems. So it seems like you highly recommend this for collaboration and communication, which is the goal of Microsoft Teams really, or any type of tool like this is the end goal. Um, is there anything else you would like to add? I'd, I'd, I'd say just give it a go. I think for us it's worked really, really well. I'm sure for everyone it won't be the same kind of journey, but good luck. Okay, thank you, Chris. Thank you.